Drills, drill drivers, impact drivers, impact wrenches, hammer drills, and rotary hammers. All that and more explained on this episode of Manjaro. Hello, my name is Jim German and welcome. Let's talk about different ways you can either drill a hole or drive a screw. Now if you want to drive a screw by hand, you could use a screwdriver. If you want to drill a hole by hand, you could use a hand drill. However, most of us are going to reach for a cordless drill. There's lots of different types of these. This one and most of the ones on the market today are actually drill drivers. The difference between a drill and a drill driver is this clutch up top here. The clutch can be adjusted so that if you're driving a screw, it'll stop at a, spe a specific torque so that it doesn't overdrive the screw. That can also, most of them can be locked on a drill setting where it doesn't matter how much torque there is, the drill won't stop until it can't go anymore. Let's talk about the forces involved when driving a screw or drilling a hole. The first and most obvious is the rotational force. When you squeeze the trigger, the motor in the drill imports torque onto the drill bit and that turns the drill bit which should drill your hole. The second and less obvious force is the downward axial force. Usually on a drill, you apply that by hand. I push down on the drill which provides cutting force on the bit. With the drill, all that axial force is going to be applied by your hands pushing down. Now if you're using a small bit, it's a soft material, you don't really need much force. If it's a bigger bit, harder material, you might need to apply a little bit more force. However, all that force is applied by your hand. That works fine for a drill. Drills like nice constant amounts of force and typically don't require that much. Now let's use our drill driver to try and drive a screw. I'm going to use a small quarter inch sharp pointed dr drywall screw. See so it goes in with no problem. The drill provides the rotational force and I push down to provide an axial force. Let's see what happens when we use a slightly larger screw and I don't push down so hard. So you can see the drill starts to cam out. To fix that problem, the typical response is just to push down hard, which is easy enough to do in this situation where I'm right on top of it and it's only a two inch screw and a fairly soft piece of wood. But what if you're putting this screw into a piece of maple or you're upside down around a corner or something? Then what you do is you get your impact driver out. So an impact driver is very similar to a drill except for the fact that not only does it provide a rotational force, it also provides an axial force in the way of an impact. So as I try to drive the screw, <clears throat> I don't have to push down, the driver will push down for me. So you can see with even minimal force it's not going to cam out. So the impact in an impact driver applies an impact motion in this direction as well as an impact motion in this direction. The impact motion in, this, in the rotational direction allows it to put more torque out than a small drill like this would. So a small impact driver, a 12 volt impact driver, would be able to drive a very large screw even though it doesn't have the constant torque that a drill like this does. So we know an impact driver now applies an axial force and a rotational force both in an impact form. This prevents it from camming out when you're driving a screw in. So over here in this bit of claptrap, I've got a bolt that's been tightened as much as I could with some hand tools. So let's see how we could use a power tool to take it out. So first I'm going to use my small drill. It's got a half inch socket on the end of it and we'll see what happens. Nothing. Not strong enough. It is in the faster setting. Let's just try it in the lower one. Also, still not coming off. Okay, so clearly we need a bigger drill. So we get the bigger drill, put that in slow. Almost rips my hand off, but still the bolt's in there. So now what do we do? Well, let's try our impact driver. Now this has the benefit that it's not going to try and rip my hand off because the torque is only in an impulse mode. Still not enough to get here. Well, let's try a bigger impact driver. So this is the same as that one, only it's just a bigger motor. It's an 18 volt. It's still not able to do it. So what do we do then? Well, you switch to an impact wrench. This is an impact wrench. It's air powered, but they still make uh, cordless electric ones that work just as well. Some of them are even more powerful than most of the air ones. 
The difference between an impact wrench and an impact driver is the impact wrench doesn't put any axial impulse on. It's only a rotational impulse. So that means it's not going to do you any good if you're trying to drive a screw and it keeps camming out. However, if you're trying to undo a bolt that's a hex head where you don't have to worry about it camming out, it's great. It takes it out without a problem. So impact wrenches generally provide an order of magnitude more torque than an impact driver. An impact driver is not meant for doing bolts. Impact wrenches, the big ones will go up to 700 foot pounds. This will generally measured in inch pounds. You can even get like a three quarter inch or one inch impact wrench. They use them on trucks. They go up to 1500 foot pounds. It's a ridiculous amount of torque. A regular drill provides a constant rotational force. An impact driver provides an impact force in the rotational direction and in the axial direction. An impact wrench provides only an impact in the, in the rotational direction. One safety note about using both impact wrenches and impact drivers. You should always make sure to use an impact rated socket. Both of these are impact sockets. Typically there will be a black oxide coating on them so they'll look black. You don't want to use a regular chrome socket on this because they can fracture and shatter and go flying and hurt people. A hammer drill is very similar to a regular drill. It provides a constant rotational force. It can be used to drill holes in regular materials. This one happens to be corded, but they make cordless ones too. The difference is that it has a hammer mode. When you engage that, when you push down hard enough on this, it will engage the hammer mode, which does just like what you would think. It hammers forward. It hammers in the axial direction. Not, so it's basically the opposite of an impact wrench that hammers in the rotational direction. So this is very useful for drilling a hole into a rock or concrete or something like that. You'll typically use a mason bit that has a carbide tip on it and this hammers away at the material as the, the flutes on the bit are just there to remove the material. So let's see if this works. So you can see with the hammer mode engaged you can hear that hammering effect. It's a very fast sort of sound. If we put it on the regular one, you don't hear that. So let's see how quickly we can drill through this. Alright, so that's a hammer drill. Now I don't have a rotary hammer here. The difference with the rotary hammer is that the primary drive is not in the rotational direction. It does rotate generally fairly slowly though. Most of the energy is going into impacting it. So on a rotary hammer, not only can you put a bit, you can put a chisel or some other sort of tool like that that generally just smashes up the rock as opposed to if you want to drill a hole through it. They also work really well if you want to drill a really big hole. All right, one last time, a drill, rotational, impact driver, impact in the rotation and in the axial direction, impact wrench, impact in just the rotational direction, and a hammer drill, rotation and impact in the forward direction. So this you want to use for masonry work, this you want to use for very high torque lugs and bolts, this you want to use for screws, uh, and also you can use it for reasonably high torque lag bolts, things like that. And this should be used mostly for drilling holes, although it works just fine for regular screws as well. Hope you guys learned something, and thanks for watching.